go through the barrier. And here we go. This is this is it. That's it. Wow. That uh, gate there. So I this think. is where you grew up in Johannesburg. Yeah. Point it left. That should be it. Yeah. There it is. Thirty A. Thirty A. Wow. Thirty A. There you go. We found it. Yeah. It's this kind of brick driveway thing. Um, the electric fencing on the wall is forty thousand volts, and uh, we installed that as well because uh, some guys got into the. Not into the house, but into the, well, I guess you'd call that a compound. And they stole uh, the family car and a bunch of other equipment from the garage. In South Africa, burglary is not this nice thing in the UK. Like, you, they come in the day, there's like one guy, maybe two, in like tracky bottoms. And they get in, and oh, they're at work, and it's very polite. And they take your DVD player or your TV and their laptop, and they, they fuck off. And maybe they shit on the floor, I don't know depending on how high they are. You know, and they're very rarely armed. Uh, so in Africa, they'll come in at night time. There'll be at least three, three to seven guys. Uh, knives and duct tape, minimum. But maybe guns if you're dealing with someone very fancy. And they, they go deliberately at night because they know you're in there because that means that they can get your pin numbers from you or if you have a safe with valuables in. They assume every house is a safe. So we had some family friends who got into a bit of a sticky situation who uh, did not in fact have a safe. But it's a question of when do the burglars start believing you that you don't have a safe? And in their case, it was when they got the they got the eight and 10 year old kids and put guns in their mouths and shoved them up against the wall. Jesus and then, then they believed <laughs> that they didn't have a safe. Yeah, that's a... Uh, they moved pretty soon after that. Could that be it? That uh, looks like a place. Maybe. Kind there's of. a sign there that you can read. If there's a tree behind, a tree in the way. Yeah, there we yes, go. Yes, okay. Tabili Nursery School. Yeah, with its barbed wire. <laughs> <laughs> that is so Johannesburg. Yeah, it um, it was lovely uh, nursery school. Really, really nice. Uh, yeah, so I, I didn't learn to read or write till I was six or seven because you didn't need to. But then I moved to the UK where everyone else had been in school for fucking three years. Which is, I was like, oh crap. I, was, I remember sitting and practicing the alphabet and everything. That's why my, my handwriting still now is, is mad. It's like an insane old Earl's handwriting. So is this fairly typical of like Johannesburg kind of? Pretty much. I mean, it's just a sort of fairly grim... The nearest place I can ever compare it to for people is somewhere like like some of the grimmer shots of Albuquerque and Breaking Bad, you know, <laughs> like somewhere hot and deserty and high altitude and sort of industrial and it's expanded so quickly that you can see all the buildings are these kind of like just blah blah, pull the concrete, come on, we need more buildings. Yeah, so it's, it's it, it, the, since we left it's got even more massive and uh, yeah, it's not a visually pretty town. Robot. Yeah. What's robot? Traffic lights. Ah. Short for robot policeman. Makes sense. Yeah. There's a much larger black middle class in South Africa now. I think the name for them is Black Diamonds. Black Diamonds. Black Diamonds, okay. yeah. And they're sort of a big growing and prof massively fast growing professional class accountants, lawyers, engineers, uh, doctors, etc. But the progress to an extent has stopped. So what's actually happened is w a lot of the very left-wing guys will say that what's actually happened is that they've created a kind of an upper, upper middle class and nothing else. So just a bunch of rich doctors and lawyers, and then that suddenly the progress has stopped. So it's still a long way to go. It's a crazy place to live, but if you... There's a certain type of person who doesn't mind it, whether you... The security measures seem crazy in Europe, but if it's what you're used to, then it's just necessary, and it's just what you do. So that uh, people will just not mind it, and they won't think it's particularly crazy or excessive or unusual, and because it, it isn't, it's the standard procedure. So if you don't mind that kind of thing, you will be able to live there very well. You'll be able to afford a swimming pool, and you'll probably have like a maid who can come in once a week because it just it doesn't cost anything by European standards. It's very cheap. Uh, but then you need to be a special kind of person to deal with all the rest of it. Maybe, maybe buy a gun, <laughs> depending on where you live. 
then sometimes it's too dangerous to buy a gun because people will try and rob you to get your gun because <laughs> guns are quite expensive and they're very valuable in themselves so maybe don't buy a gun maybe just get a bat yeah but if that's that kind of thing doesn't worry you then move to Africa immediately because you'll live like a king even on what in the UK is a relatively modest salary so that was it Pierre Novelli I hope you enjoyed the episode I'm gonna I'm gonna take Pierre's advice and wander down here see if I can buy a gun Uh, just hang out here for a bit maybe So, yeah, that was it. So make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.